YouTubers, this is another video from your friendly neighborhood reviewer Evelyn. Today we're going to be reviewing another K-drama series called The One Do Dollar Lawyer, starring Nam Minguk as the title character of Chong Jinhyu. I'm going to put the you know correct names here. Nam Minguk, like I, the last series that we saw him was in the Veil, the Veil, in which he played like a green CIA spy, which he beefed up. And in this one, he's gone back to some comedic roots as the title lawyer, which apparently he charges the equivalent to one dollar, one pound, like one chon, like or for his services to help people that are down and out. And also he gets reunited with the actress of Ji Yoon, who was also in the mail. This is the interesting, I've never seen a, a Korean show where they've reunited the female lead and the male lead. I was really interested in what see what new dynamic there was. So apparently the Mr. Chon, Nam Ming Guk's character, he works with this guy in who who works in the laundry mat. And then we, we did, and then we find out that his friend, his friend's wife, if you've seen the series Adamas, is the same actress that plays the who plays the evil head maid, which I saw uh, when I saw the little actress, I was thinking, oh my god, so weird to see her, you know, smiling, be nice, being human. So at the beginning of episode one, we start off that Mr. Chon is responding to a request that of this guy that's down and out of his luck. He went and got some money from some loan sharks and now they're asking him them him to pay back which he hasn't got the money. And then he goes to where the guy's going to kill himself, he's going to jump off the bridge and all the firefighters and policemen are like, don't do it, don't do it. And then they, <laughs> the funny line is when the firefighters tell him and says, when they see him there, he's drinking, you know, alcohol on the bridge. He, they tell him, come down, drink the alcohol here. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what a way to convince him. And then this show is very comedic. This is the right type of comedy that I like, in which we have the serious moments and the comedy that's well placed, that all the characters, they take the comedy seriously and it's not fake. Unfortunately, Cafe Min and Dang failed to do that. There was no serious moments. And with episode one, we see that Mr. Chon goes and helps the guy reclaim back his money. And then we get introduced to the other character of Mari, a bake Mari, which played by the female lead, in which she's a trainee prosecutor and she's trying to get her wings. You know, like she's trying to, you know, move, climb higher within the, you know, law society or whatever it is. We find out that the, you know, bake Mari, she, I, I don't like, you know, her character is real like, she comes from a rich family, she's arrogant, she's snobbish, she thinks she knows everything. So she has like that kind of spoiled child mentality. As well, Mr. Chon encounters her when she's when he's there trying to help the guy, with the guy that's on the bridge, uh, reclaim back some money and get out of debt. And the funny thing is that literally he only asks for, you know, in the UK, we have one pound, in America is one dollar, so he only asks for one pound or one dollar for their services. That's the funny thing about these K-dramas, that you have these, you know, these big heroes helping people, like, but then again, you don't really see how they maintain this lifestyle. Nobody can survive with one pound, so I would like to see more of a bad explanation of Mr. Chon's story. The only thing we know that Mr. Chon, he left the prosecutor's office for some reason, and he's there trying to help as much people within the law as possible and we can see that he has a clever mind. So the way that he helps this, this poor down and out guy reclaim his money is he, will, he goes with his friend to the uh, loan shark's office, they have some connections and they're waiting. And at the same time, Bake Mari, she's there going to the loan shark's place because she has him on the file for racketeering and stuff that, of being a loan shark. But as Mr. Chun and his friend is waiting there, they have something to eat and so on, Bake Mari goes into the office and they have like kind of like an antagonistic relationship in, w in which she mistakes them to be the loan sharks. They clear out slightly and on top of that, she goes and messes up their food. So the way that Mr. Chun finds a way to help the guy is he goes and offers his, his services to the loan shark in which he inadvertently charges them the money, the exact money that this poor guy owns the loan sharks. But the way he does that is he waits for, he waits for the time in which the search warrant that Bake Mari goes and, you know, apparently has. And when the search warrant expires at the time, he goes and says, sorry, the search warrant, you know, it's 
we went and done this too late. This should have been done earlier, in which we see that bake Mari, or I just gotta call her Mari. Uh, she realizes that she did that rookie mistake, that she was a bit too arrogant, and then Mr. Tron at one point for him, and that gets her really angry, and you kind of see her like going, oh my god. And that's the case of episode one in which he solves. He goes and helps the guy by charging the loan sharks for his services or helping them not to get charged by the prosecution. And he goes and, you know, he only thing he tells the guy is, don't, you know, use this money to do a good life. And we can see that the guy's really heartfelt and promises to do that. And on, and then we get with episode two that but Bait Murray's last case before she goes and joins her grandfather's law firm is about this pickpocketing gone wrong. In episode two, this pick, you know, this former guy, like former criminal, he's trying to change his life. He's there like cleaning the subway, you know, the train station toilets. And inadvertently, this drunk business guy goes and bumps into him. And inadvertently, the pick, you know the ex-convict puts his arms around the waist where the pocket where the wallet is. And the guy kind of goes and mistakes like he's trying to like steal his money. We find out that this guy has a daughter that's very ill in the hospital and the wife. And he goes and says that you know he wasn't going to steal anything, even even though because the episode two is about where we have reoffenders and how long do you give you know, a person who reoffends another chance. He had like four convictions of pickpocketing, but the big issue is, you know, evidence. So the prosecutor, Bay Omari, goes and interrogates this guy and tells him, you know, you've been convicted four times already. So like, just make it easier for yourself and just confess and that you're sorry, so you can go out. And then when the, when the interrogation of Mari and the um, and the guy accused of pickpocketing again. It was like so intense. He come to you, you come me, as a viewer. I came to dislike the character of her arrogance for her assumptions. The wife goes and meets Mr. Chun's friend at the at, at their office, an office in which they have no money to pay the rent. So we get the comedic feels from that. And she goes, and then the friend goes and tells Mr. Chun about the case with the wife. Mr. Chun is hesitant at first. He's like. I'm not sure, he's been already convicted four times. But even though, he goes and meets with the guy in prison and he goes and sees the guy and he goes and takes up the guy's case after visit, like, like before he visited the guy's daughter in which he inadvertently makes a promise to help the, the, the daughter's father come out from prison. So episode two is basically Mr. John in court and we can see his eccentric ways in which he jokes around with the court people trying to prove this guy's innocence and he, make, and he makes a good point by the end of episode 2 that this guy was a really good pickpocketer that his nickname was the invisible hand and he said and he knew Steve the guy that accused the ex-con of stealing from him to close his eyes in the middle of the courtroom and when the guy opens up his eyes, he finds the cues, the dad, having the wallet in his hand. And then he makes the point of contention in which Mr. Chong wins the case, saying that if for a guy that's nickname was called the Invisible Hand, and he went and targeted rich people, he, why, like, why would he all of a sudden change his modus operandus, his MO, to go in a public toilet and to steal something that's frankly, you know, not that much. The big point in episode two is Bake Mari loses the case in front of her grandfather. And when she tries, when she moves on from the courtroom and goes to her grandfather to say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm ready to join the company. The grandfather goes and says, I'm sorry, but you've lost the case. And I want you to go to this address. If you intern here for two months and pass, you can come back to my company. Because we see after the court case, the grandfather goes and asks his assistant about Mr. Chon. He goes and says, you know, find this guy who he is and so on. I think there's a connection. I think he knows who Mr. Chon is. And something must have happened. So there's a connection there. And I think maybe he may have talked to Mr. Chon about his granddaughter. And Bake Marie, you know, episode two is about a lesson in humbleness on her character for her level of arrogance and you know being you know very judgmental so by the end of episode two she has to convince mr chon because in episode one she told you know some people in the prosecution office that this guy is weird eccentric 
dangerous and he basically tells her if i'm weird eccentric and dangerous why are you going to work for me and she has to suck up and pretend saying well there's so much i have to learn from you from the case and by the end of episode two we see another case that comes about of this little boy and his grandfather who works as a security in which his grandfather is being abused by this like rich guy in which I recognize this guy from, he's doing also, uh, what was it, The Law Cafe as another antagonist and which Mr. Chon helps the, the grandson by inadvertently, because there was a dispute in which this rich guy goes and accuses the, the grandfather, the security guy was scratching the bumper of the car and which led to the grandfather losing his wages and in turn, Mr. Chon, you know, puts the blame on himself because he goes and asks the rich guy, okay, that, like demonstrate to me how this you know how the the grandfather was you know was the one that scratched your car so he goes with a trolley and he says was he going with the trolley like this yeah like was how fast was he going he said no faster faster and then he and then mr chon let's grow the trolley and the bumper and the trolley crashes into the bumper and the bumper falls down on the ground so at the end everybody's going like oh my god what's going on so at the end of episode two, he tells Big Mari, you know, if you want to join my law firm, your first mission is to get me off of this case. And then Big Mari at the end, she's like, she's so angry. She wants to strangle him. And then we have the end of the episode leading up for episode three and four. What do I think about so far episode one and two? Extremely funny. Comedic times at the right place. It's great to see Na Minguk in this type of role. And I do have good feelings for the next episodes. But of course, like with all series, we need a big bad. So we have yet to be revealed who's the big bad of the series. So this is the end of the episode. If you made it to the end, a big thank you. And to any new viewers, I really appreciate it. If you can hit the subscribe button, like, share and comment. And as I leave you always, 